fraught with peril. I tended to screw up some things with connecting other people, but we're here to talk about royalties. It's a show that I created with my friends uh, that has been a long time coming about uh, songwriters uh, working their way through the music industry, and it features a ton of original music that I was in, uh, that I wrote all the songs for, along with a bunch of uh, fun collaborators. Uh, so I didn't write them all by myself. I had some amazing uh, people help me with that. Um, all those songs are available now wherever you can get music, um, uh, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera, where else you get music. But the album season one, Royalties, the soundtrack, uh, featuring the 10 songs from all 10 episodes, uh, including two other songs um, that we'll talk about today with some of these amazing guests that we have. Um, but uh, yeah, the show is available on, only on Quibi. Um, if you're familiar, not familiar with what Quibi is, you can download it for free. There's a 14-day free trial, um, and you can watch our show, and hopefully you love the app so much that you stick to it and maybe watch some of the other shows that they have on there. But that is the only place you can see, uh, you know, the show that we worked on royalty. So I'm in it as an actor, like I said, I wrote the songs, and there's a lot of other incredible people in there that we're going to talk to today. Um, what am I forgetting? Um, oh, there's full music videos that are not only in the app Quibi, but one of the things that's not in, in, on Quibi, it's, uh, it's on my YouTube channel. You can check out Darren Chris, the YouTube channel. Um, we have all 10 music videos with the lyrics attached. A lot of them won't make sense out of context. So if you want them to make sense, definitely check out the show. But we're here to celebrate that full album drop. And if you've watched the show, thank you for checking it out. And if you haven't, hopefully this might inspire you to Check it out and familiarize yourself with not only the show, but some of the people that we're going to be talking to today. So the first person that I would like to introduce is my lovely co-star. She plays Sarah, the uh, other half of the writing duo, Pierce and Sarah. Um, and uh, I was so happy to have her part of our show. She was one of the first people we cast. And uh, I'm going to try and have her join right now if I can figure this out because I'm so crappy with Instagram. Takes me forever to figure out. There she is. All right. The one, the only, Kether Donahue. Hi, Kether. I, I'm shocked how easy that was. I was ready to like click on the button and be like, like my mom figuring Here out. We are. Next. Here we oh, are. Here we are. Hi. Look at that bangs. Are you? Your hair's your hair's a little different from in the show. I love it. I know. I, well, like we talked about in our MTV interview, this is kind of like my homage to the receptionist and Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. <laughs> it's a, if, you've, if you've never seen that movie, it's a classic. Yeah. Do yourself a favor, <laughs> check it out. Kether is nailing the hair from it. Kether, when we cast you, we wanted to have you because, um, obviously, for your comedic chops and your musical background. And we've talked about this in other interviews about how, you know, you and I both have imposter syndrome as far as our abilities as singers. Oh, it's Jessica, sort of like a... Jessica, man, you have to say, I'm seeing some friends. You're so good. You're seeing all the people saying hi. We yes. see all your hearts. We see all the people that Sorry, are waving. Darren, we wave back I'm at you. I'm just going to be in a conversation with the No, followers. it's okay. You, you know, should. Uh, don't mind. Don't interrupt me with my, my conversation with them, please. Please. These, are, these fans are saying hi, and we're saying hi back to them. We got a lot of people, so I'm, I'm just barreling uh, all yes, through yes. this. Yes, 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 yes. Tell me. So I was going to say, was, uh, you know, was there any reluctance when I said, hey, it's going to be a music show? Fuck no. I mean, I was just, ha oh, am I allowed to curse on here? Yeah, no, fuck I was yeah. Just, I was just thrilled you were asking me to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, I'm a big believer of fake it till you make it. So I was like, if Which I Which is what I'm, we do on the I'm show, doing, essentially. Oh, hi, Jackie. I can't wait to hear you. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna fan girl out over here. I'm gonna kick back and watch all these amazing people that you're you should. About to have on. Can I can I ask you one question about Sarah? What was Fuck your yeah. what was your favorite part about Sarah? Was it uh, any lines, any wardrobe, any scenes? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what my favorite part was. It's that Sarah stands up for what she believes in, and uh, she fights for justice. And I think right now is a prime time for everybody to fight for justice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a, a link in my bio to initiate justice. It's an amazing organization. I, uh, you guys should all be supporting right now. Um, they end mass incarceration in LA. And, yes. Uh, Kether, I, more on that later. We're, we were going to, we're sure. 
We're going to talk about this a bit later. Um, we're, we're just barely cracking the surface on that. As Kether said, this is a very important time that's much larger than things like as, that seem very silly as, and small as royalties. We're going to get into that later. So we're just going to say bye to Kether for now. But um, thank you for joining us. We will see you in a second. I love and, you. Uh, I wait, wait. I, I, just, I just need to hear. Do you know the rest of the song? Na, 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 na. This is the theme song. This is the theme, theme song. song. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll see you in a bit. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Okay. X out of there. I'm getting better and better at this, guys. Uh, the next guy is, uh, I'm not really going to introduce him. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, have him join because I'm running a little behind. If you're watching this and you're supposed to join on this, just know that I'm going to be a couple minutes behind because I like to chat with all the friends that we haven't seen in a bit. Uh, this next guy has been a friend a, uh, uh, what's the word? Co-conspirator for many years. There he is, Mr. John Stamos, everybody. Hi, Darren. Hi, everybody. Hey, buddy. What are you playing? I was playing Jesse's Girl. I just try to... In know. what key? E, uh, what key is it in? E? Uh, uh, it can be an E, it can be in D. Oh, yeah, D, D. It never works. I know, because it's a delight. I see you have Jesse your fingernails black friend. because... You were so obsessed with my character and yeah, in your Warwick. character. Did you ask to have? So, if you guys don't know, John plays uh, Elia Peck, who is right. sort of an evil adversary to Pierce and Sarah on royalties. Um, I envisioned him as kind of an evil Desmond Child. For those of you who don't know who Desmond Child is, he's a prolific songwriter, man about town, uh, a, a sort of, uh, a, a, I mean, just a, an incredible songwriter. You can look up his hits. Um, very Desmond's kind of a good sexy guy, though. The guy He's a great that guy. wrote for me is an asshole. And <laughs> a fuck, I have to, Kether got in like eight fucks. So I got it. He was a fucking asshole. You can get as many fucks in as you want. Yeah, asshole. Um, yeah. So why did you think of me, Darren? Let, let me ask you that. Because I'm tired of seeing you be a nice guy. Okay. It's like, let's, let's let John be the skeezy asshole that he knows he is in real life. Yeah, exactly. Well, you got it, you know. I, <laughs> I love you. I love playing this character. Yeah, when it got there, um, I was like, "What? I need something." I, he wore a lot of make. Even the character, like, sort of wore a lot of makeup and eyeliner, and my hair was dark. But um, I thought I need something with my because I wanted to use my fingers a lot. You yeah. Know? So I painted one black, and you guys were on the set, and I had they took a picture and sent it up to you guys, and I said, "I, I want to do my whole hand." I said, "No, only one." And then I think it was like, well, "Okay, you, you, asked, you said you said I wasn't sure if you were doing that to make fun of me with the with the nail polish. What was the impetus for that? Was it just because you wanted to have like a character thing? Because I like to have nail polish then. I know, but I, I on and off I do it. I go in oh, really? waves. Well, maybe I did it about twenty five years ago in this musical first for for cabaret before you were born. Uh, yeah, girl, I remember that. Um, um, uh, I just yeah, it cool. I mean, it's a good look. I think painted fingernails, I've always been a proponent of this. I think it always is a cool thing. I mean, it, I, it, it does just stick, you gesticulate differently. I did cabaret for like, you know, eight, nine months or so, and I left it on the whole time. Yeah, it it's cool. Banged up, yeah, it is cool. It's it's rock and roll, I've always liked it. Um, was hey, there Darren, any, yes. I'm proud of you, man. You, you're really a, a, an inspiration. You, you've got so many things going on, you're so driven. And just when a guy like me gets a little tired, it's like, oh, I've done enough. That I look at you, I said, oh, man, I got to get another couple of TV shows. This guy's, but, uh, um, and I know thanks, you're going man. through, your, your father passed away and uh, he was, a lot of things. He, he's got to be so proud right now. He really does. Oh yeah, man. Hey, listen, he, he led a great life. And I was, I was glad that I, he got to see a lot of the fun stuff that I got to yeah. do. And you guys got to hang out with, he got to meet a lot of people that I loved. It's all, it's yes. all good. It's all, it's all part of the majestic, uh, Insanity of life, you know. Um, but thank God he, he lived a good one. But royalties. Yeah, royalties. Let, let me ask you this: uh, Do you ever feel like people don't know about a lot of the musical uh, inclinations you have? I mean, you know, this is something I think from all roles that you've played, whether you're playing the drums or guitar, you know, you play the you play drums for the fucking Beach Boys for Christ's sake. Uh, is there any kind of musical muscle that you feel like you haven't gotten to flex? Because you and I are both musicians that have made our way as actors. So is there anything you're like, you know what, man, I'm just dying for someone to ask me to blank. Um, I don't, I'm dying for people to ask me to, to stop singing because I'm a terrible singer. I have to work so, you're just so <laughs> naturally great. I love theater and I love musical theater, but I'm, I'm awful and I have to like, we have the same singing coach, Eric Vitro, we just like, I, but it takes me months and months and months to learn one song. I'm just awful, I, I hate it. 
But I, um, I think I think I think that's how every musician feels. I get it because I'm the same way. I've had to kind of fall into the singing thing. I'd always prefer to play an instrument than sing. Yeah. Um, John, I love you. We only have a couple you. minutes. I'm sure we'll we'll talk soon. Congratulations. Um, you add so much to the show. Thank you, bud. And uh, Watch, my favorite scene was that pickle scene with Kevin. That's a great scene. I love that's it. why. Yeah. And you know, I'll have fans know that that scene was the character of Elliot Peck was uh, was written as the voice of Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. And so the fact that it's you, it makes it even just a weirder cocktail than I could have ever imagined. The you bring so is, much to it. We love you, The show is man. really fun. Watch it. I mean, it, it goes all over the place. And I remember reading going like, how is he going to pull all this together? But you did beautifully. It's really I fun I don't know how he did it, man. It's but great. It's thanks to folks like you that were, that were so good to me to do this. So well, I love you, man. Love I'll you. talk to you soon, bud. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. I so... So if you, I was kind of alluding to this earlier, you know, this, this show is something that, um, you know, the writing took a long time and, and the, the thinking about it was gestating for a long time, but ultimately shooting it and putting it together was fast. Whoa, sorry guys. Can you hear me? Okay. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Don't call me uh, right now. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so, you know, we, I had to rely on the, the, the um, goodness of a lot of friends to help me out at last minute. And uh, at one point, when we originally shot this uh, uh, pilot presentation, this little kind of short version of the show, which I'll get into a bit later, uh, Nick Lang actually played the part of this character. And when we were getting into it, much like John Stamos hates to sing, but is very good at it, and Nick Lang hates to act, even though he's also very good at it, he's like, I don't know, I just, I just want somebody else to do it. And I said, who would you want to have? And he said, well, do you know that guy from like the Spider-Man movies. And it was like, Tony Revori? Yeah, he's actually like a friend. Let me ask him. And God bless this man who I adore. He fucking said yes, like immediately. And by the grace of just the fates, I don't know how it all happens, but he was available and he did it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Revori, AKA Theo on our show. Yes. And he plays our <laughs> hapless engineer who has to be around for all the shenanigans of writers, much like in real life. What's up, man? Yeah. How, you doing? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just have enjoying you, have, some fresh air. Have you checked out the show? I have watched it a good six times. Really? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I can't get enough of these songs, man. I'm addicted to it. Thanks. Sometimes dude. I'm just driving and, and I'll put on the playlist. Um, I can't thank you enough. I was talking about this in a second for you coming in last minute and doing this. We became friends like yeah. a year and a half. So before this really kind of got the wheels turning and when Nick said your name, I just yeah. couldn't fucking believe it. Cause I was like, of all the people you could have said, this dude is like a drinking buddy at yeah. our bar. He's the man. Like, <laughs> um, but it's also, it's also haplessly funny. I, you didn't even know this, but uh, I think we, we had a short conversation about it that I was an actual sound engineer. For yes, about two I was going to bring that up. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about I, that. I, I uh, down in Orange County, I really liked uh, the musical aspect, but I was not very good at uh, playing <laughs> instruments. So um, my dad, like you know, put me as a, a engineer for like two summers, and I did a couple of internships, and I actually was an assistant sound engineer for a Dave's Matthews band, uh, uh, like one of their albums for Wait, a summer. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, I put out I, that Dave Matthews cover song. Like that, that's so crazy. I put oh, out a that's song right. with yeah. <laughs> that's like, whoa, weird circle yeah. of life. What was yep. worse, being Theo, if Theo was a real person, like if that, that was that role any, at, at all similar to your experience as a, as a Dave Matthews uh, engineer? Um, Almost, because I mean, I was a glorified <laughs> assistant as as uh, the assistant sound engineer. I would like go get the copies and do everything and obviously connect all the cables and everything, make sure everything's in tune. Um, and for royalties, I just felt like I was like servicing you guys. Um, yeah. Which, by the way, was great. And it was so much fun. You were such and a good sport. One, one of my big fears of, of casting you in this, I was like, oh, like, First of all, Tony's like, he's a movie star. He's a good actor. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to put him behind the glass um, and be kind of like this, the sort of the straight man to this comedy yeah. uh, uh, duo between the two of us. But you were gaming. You did a really great job with it, man. You're super fun. Yeah. And I'm glad you just had such a good time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, engineers in a session, it, it, that's like the people that are on the buttons, so to speak, people yep. on the lap. These days, it's less and less in the studio and more on, on laptops. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times those songwriters are this are the engineers people can do them all themselves but for the yeah. sake of a triumvirate 
of comedy, I wanted to have those be separate and have this poor guy who has to kind of be the indentured I mean, servant of these. They gave me they gave me some good books. I was I was happily on the other side, and I think um, honestly, it was just really hard not to like keep laughing when you I'm guys glad, were man. just on um, the other side of it. I'm I'm gonna inflate my ego any sec for a second. Do, uh, do, what's your favorite song? <sighs> All right. I love just that good, but I think Mighty as Kong is my favorite. Really, the reason why I asked yeah. again was not I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't really yeah. Yeah. I was curious if you were partial <laughs> to make make you come true, which is sort of I, the, I mean, the like, you I, song. I love make you come true. I think it's great. I, I obviously listen to that song way more than any of the other ones. Right, because you shot. Yeah, because yeah. I shot it with uh, uh, Jordan and everything. I I mean I love the song, but I also. <laughs> I just, I think Mighty as Kong is just such an easy song to explain how the show is. It's like, yeah, what's, thanks, what's the show about? It's like, there's these songs and these songwriters, and there's a song about, you know, King Kong having a tiny dick. <laughs> like, what more, what more do you need to explain? <laughs> there's, and and it's, it's Mark Hamill. Right. You know, know. singing I it. Fucking Listen, shit. We got to pinch ourselves, man. It's like, what what world do we live in? You're in the Marvel world. We we get to hang on yeah. Mark Hamill. It's like, what what is life? Um, I love you, man. I got to get on to, to our too. next pal. Yes. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in real life very soon. Absolutely. All right, cheers, bud. See ya. Thanks for joining us. So as Tony mentioned, you know, there's some there's some songs. If you're just joining us, we're talking about royalties and we're celebrating the the album of uh, full release. There are ten songs for the ten episodes of royalties, which is on Quibi. Uh, and the album now is two extra songs. Uh, a song Make You Come True, which is sung by Jordan Fisher. We have Mightiest Kong, sung by Mark Hamill. The list goes on and on. You can check them out. But I'm going to introduce a friend of mine who uh, uh, actually, here's an interesting fact. We actually lived in the same room, not at the same time, but nonetheless in the same house uh, because uh, we have lots of LA family and history together. Please welcome the lovely, the wonderful, a uh, young lady who plays Kendra, aka the manager of Pierce and Sarah, Georgia King, who is, we're waiting to join us right now. But I'll just tell the story while we're waiting for her. Um, uh, I lived with one of my good friends, Jeff, for many years in Los Angeles. And when I moved out, as you know, if you have roommates, if you're like, hey, I'm going to move out, uh, it's, you know, good practice to find a new roommate so they can keep the rent alive. And so when I met Georgia, she had just started on, uh, the new normal, um, which is one of Ryan Murphy's shows. And so when I met her, we, we just got on like a house on fire and uh, she was looking for a place to live. And I was like, I've got a great idea. Do you want to take over my room? So she took over uh, and uh, I missed the house. That was some good times. And Georgia and I have been buddy buddies ever since. We're workout buddies as well. And it's not working, unfortunately, Georgia. I'm so sorry. Um, but uh, feel free to check out her stuff. It says Georgia McKing is unable to join. Blame the internet. Blame Blame the craziness of 2020. That's a bummer. But uh, she, like I said, she plays Kendra, our manager. She's so funny on that. And she's actually very British. Uh, she tends to play American roles all the time. And so I was like, can I please have you actually be your lovely British self with your lovely British accent? And she crushed it and we love her. And I'm sorry that she can't join us, but I'm going to move right along because we're now back on schedule. I'm going to have another friend of mine from, uh, from the days of your... Um, a man that uh, I'm not really going to make any introductions. I'm just going to have him show up if I can get his name to show up in my dang thing. Hold on a sec. Go live with, um, it rhymes with Shmevin Shmemail. Shmemail. If he can join here. Ugh, why are these always happening? Okay, I have to, okay Kevin, I've totally, falsely, false alarm. I'm going to get Georgia to join. All right, one more time just in case anybody hasn't dropped off. I always love seeing the numbers drop and they're like, it's not working, not interested. We're gonna try it, Georgia, just this <gasps> one more. There she is. Oh my God. Hello, <laughs> darling. Hello. Hello. Um, turns out I'm a grandma when it comes to technology. Are you kidding me? I have to have like 80,000 people explain to me how to use stuff. Like when people say stuff, have you seen this thing on Instagram? I have to ask Mia, be like, how do I look this up? And she has to show me, because I am the fucking worst with Instagram. Unbelievable. I, I, like, I like know what I want to post and I have help, people help me post it, so no worries. You look beautiful. Oh, thanks, darling. I'm so um, happy to see you. It's so yeah, wonderful to listen to everyone talk about the show. Congratulations. Yeah, I was, I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I 
was rooting for you to do this forever. Uh, I always wanted you to be in this show um, because I adore you and you're a, a wonderful comedian of sorts. Um, and uh, again, nobody wants you to be British and it pisses me off. What is with that? I know, thank you so much. I actually, I think since I haven't been able to play British for so long, I felt like I have never been more British than in your show. Well, what's great is you actually <laughs> made the conscious effort to up your British game. There's some oh, really bet. goofy British improvs that you that we had to like like go through. And one that I've been saying constantly <laughs> is, uh, this isn't even a Britishism. You just say it so Britishly that it great. seems like it, where you said, uh, uh, I guess to work with you, Lucky Sausage. Lucky Sausage. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I could feel the Queen like high fiving me I with know, that my line. Mom, my mom and everyone in England hearing. <laughs> um, so I was telling everybody that you know we lived in that same room, that beautiful little spot in Los Feliz, Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, with our mutual very good buddy Jeff Jernigan. Yeah. Shout out to Jeffy. Um, Hi, Jeff. I, I just you. want. I just heard some news. So you, what you are um, also sort of a not sort of, you are a creative of sorts. Um, I've, you know, you've always been walking me through things that you're writing, working on and directing. I heard that there is a directing gig in your, in your horizon. Is that something there you're is. allowed to talk about? Yes, desperately. Um, after months of quarantine. Yeah, I um, never planned on acting. I always wanted to be a director. And then I sort of fell Oops. into acting, did a little bit of that, fell into comedy fell in love with comedy acting. And then finally, I'm kind of getting my directing um, stuff into gear. So yeah, I, I pitched on my first feature and it's a script from the blacklist. I love it so much. The writer That's is so awesome. talented, Max Taps. Um, so yeah, at some point, some <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to take back back seat to to your to your visions anytime. Mm. Um, I'm uh, I'm so happy you could join us. I'm sorry I have to kind of barrel through this. I just wanted of to course. see your lovely so face. So sorry and show for the, the hiccup. Joining Not you. at all. Congratulations. Congrats so to much. you and the directing gig. I'm so glad. I hope you don't give up uh, on the acting thing completely because if there's a season two, you know, I, I want you back. Please, can Kendra sing in season two? Ooh, I don't know. Can she? She can. Um, we don't know. <laughs> we'll find. <laughs> only one way to find out. <laughs> Uh, well, my best Bye, to the lad, so and yes, we'll see congratulations. you soon. Yes, congratulations. Bye. Thanks, babe. Bye. Bye. Uh, if you can't tell, I just spend most of my time. I, I, I've spent my life chasing my heroes, which we'll get to, slash just trying to get my friends into stuff, and uh, Giorgio certainly no exception. Speaking of getting friends into stuff, I see a lot of stuff that says, please have Kevin be next. Please have Kevin be next. Well, guess what? We didn't even get along on the show. Didn't you hear all those rumors? Kevin and I fucking hated each other. Yeah, that's right. Um, damn it. Well, I guess I guess we really did because the internet is not wanting me to, to invite Kevin. But uh, Kevin, much like a lot of my friends who really kind of uh, came in a pinch to do this, uh, was such a an angel. I can't believe that he said yes. Kevin, I don't see you, baby girl. I don't know where you is, man. I'm just not winning at this. Kevin, if you're watching, buddy, I'm going to skip to the other dude because I don't know where he at. So uh, I'm going to skip to another homie of mine whose very name inspires music. Ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend, Cord Overstreet will be joining us, a.k.a. the lead singer of your favorite butt rock band, Switchback Jacket. There he is. What's up, dude? What's going on, brother? You look like such a goddamn rock star. Wonderful and talented my, my friends are. Um, I have to tell everybody who, I've been kind of saying this earlier, and now Cord's gone. Um, for a lot of the show, because we had to do it so fast and furious, I had to rely on the, uh, the goodwill and just up for itness of my good friends and Cord and Kevin were like, sure, I'll do it. Uh, and you guys are fucking hilarious. Did you get a chance so to see fun. it? Did you watch it? Yeah, I, it finally worked for me. 
Yeah, did it work? Yeah, the link for some reason wouldn't work, and then I, I switched phones and it worked. So I don't, I don't know, but it's probably an update thing. But uh, yeah, dude, it's so funny, so fun. What did you think of your look? Did you, did you, were you happy with the way it turned out? Yeah, I mean, I look ridiculous. <laughs> I look like uh, a um, kind of like a mix between like Scott Stapp and Eddie Vedder. Yeah, it's like a thirty seconds to Vedder Scott Stapp. Yes, that's exactly it was, what it, it is. was kind of like a butt rock new rock, all in one yes. cocktail. I kind of wanted to make it all those things. You were fucking great, man. One of my favorite things is a shot of you doing the running man by yourself. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> was that um, was that one of the drone shots? Yeah, it was one of the drone shots. And what people don't know is that was the very last day of shooting. You guys were covered in black and leather and, and denim and 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 guy liner and this wig. And it was like a hundred degrees. It was so hot. It was yeah. And then afterwards, I think we. Degrees. I'm not even like being idiomatic. I think it was quite literally 99 to 100 degrees. Oh yeah, it was. It was. It was hot. You guys just fucking it crushed hot. it. And uh, so a little, a little. Uh, little factoid here uh you guys came in so last minute that we didn't have time to record your vocals beforehand okay. so the guys were both lip syncing to my vocal which was a scratch vocal and so by the time we had cord and kevin record it they had already lip synced to mine and so when i was in the edit room they did you did such a good job but... of doing my thing that i was like shit which one should we use? Because the sync was better well, on well, my yeah, vocals. It's, it's weird to think. It's weird because when you're syncing something up to a, a sound and then you sing it without any video footage, right? I mean, there's there's no way. There's no way you could really match that. Yeah, but I just so people know, you know, there's versions. I it's floating around. Maybe we'll release it one day as oh, an extra no. thing. We have chords yeah. vocals. We have, have Kevin's vocals. I definitely and then, did like I definitely did like two two different takes. I was like, all right, I'm gonna do like more of like a kind of a creed. Oh, Reach it was out, it was yeah. hilarious. It just didn't sync. So anyway, I asked both of them. You guys were like, whichever one's funnier. So it's my vocal. And actually, just as an insider thing, it's kind of hilarious that like the two of you guys are lip syncing me doing I, a, a I, character voice. I think it makes it funnier. Yeah, I think it's way funnier. It's funny that could have. I I'm trying to think in what world on Glee could that have been a number? And I was like, I don't think it could have. So I'm really glad that we that we did it. <laughs> we, we never did any Nickelback songs on Glee. You know what? We could have. I don't remember. You know what? I don't think we did. I think that's like the one genre we never touched. Yeah, butt rock. Something about that. I don't know. Like, and I, you know, that's kind of like an unfair term. I know that's like a loving, <laughs> silly term we give that genre of music. I'm like, listen, I'm here for never made it as a wise man. I mean, like, you can't look me in the eye and tell me that's a bad song. Like, I'm just sorry. <laughs> yeah, those guys, those guys kick ass. Also, they're laughing all the way to the bank. They're still one of the biggest bands in the I world. Know, Everybody I makes fun of them. Back. Yeah, it's like, come on, like, give them a break. People, people enjoy what they enjoy. Um, I love you, dude. I want to get Kevin Thank on you, here, um, and hopefully, I'll see you around very soon. People should know you have a you have a song that there's like a remix of it, right? There was yeah, a, I just um, had a song come out, uh, a remix come out Friday. Uh, yeah, by Makita, today. right? What you need, great yeah. song. Yeah. Check if people out, want man. to hear not my voice with Cord's mouth moving, but his actual beautiful voice, because Cord himself is also an incredible songwriter. The show is right. about songwriters. Comes, uh, comes from a songwriting family. Cord is a songwriter that I've always loved and admired, and that's something that I think maybe not a lot of people realize. But definitely check out his music. He's always Thanks, been uh, so good, and uh, I just listened to the song this morning. It's awesome. A nice summer jam. I love you, buddy. I love I'll you, see too, you man. soon. Thank you so much. All right, you, have a good one. You too, bud. All right. I'm not sure if I get to have Kevin join here because I've see, I see my buddy uh, Rufus Wainwright is waiting here, and so... Uh, I don't know. What, what should we do? Should we have Kevin next or Rufus? If, uh, so Rufus, if you're here, we just got pushed back as things happen. If you don't mind waiting five minutes, I'm going to talk to Mr. Kevin McHale because we've had some technical difficulties and we want to make sure that we can have everybody see all the folks that have been involved in this thing. But for some reason, McHale, I don't know what your thing is, man. It's like you don't, you don't show up. I guess I need some help here. This is so unsexy when I have to stop all this stuff like this. Kevin, baby, I don't know where you're at. Doesn't seem to come up on my Instagram. No, 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 no. So unfortunately, Kev, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to uh, introduce somebody who uh, has been a longtime uh, hero and inspiration of mine, who I'm very lucky now to, to call a friend and uh, a collaborator and co-collaborator co and co-conspirator 
Um, he plays a wacky character by the name of Jacob Jewell, a, a music icon of sorts. We kind of based him on uh, Wayne Coyne from the Flaming Lips. Uh, we'll get more into that right now with none other than the wonderful Rufus Wainwright, one of my favorite artists in the whole wide world. Rufus, where are you at? Hey, man. I'm here. Hey, pal. Thanks for waiting around. Um, having me. So I'm just going to talk really quickly about the background of this. Um, you know, we, we really wanted to be part of this show, but because of just how fast and furious things were, things got moved around. And next thing you know, within 24 hours of you saying yes to this thing, you show up on set with this wacky yeah. wig uh, that you were totally game for, and I will forever be in your debt for this. <laughs> and because we had to move some shooting things around, we ended up shooting that video on a green screen in a fucking kitchen, um, which was just the most scrappy uh, sort of fuck it, let's just do it thing that I was so embarrassed by because I here I find I get Rufus Wainwright to come and do a thing for me <laughs> and I and I give him like the sideshow version of it. So that was so kind of you to do it. I hope you had fun and uh, you sound so beautiful on the track and thank you, thank you. Have you gotten a chance to watch the show? Are you yeah, happy no, with it? Yeah, no, I saw I saw it and I was I was I was. I was actually pretty funny, which um, you were. I, I'm quite insecure about, uh, which probably makes me even funnier. <laughs> I, I think it <laughs> Cause does. Because I, I actually, you know, get crushed if, if, uh, I, if I think I fail. So, because comedy is all about being crushed, right? Sort of. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it kind of is. It's self-effacing. Yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, are familiar with Rufus's music, um, Rufus uh, comes from a very uh, esteemed lineage of um, wonderful uh, folk singer songwriters, uh, both Canadian and American. And Rufus himself has, uh, has always put out really uh, beautiful uh, music that kind of spans from all kinds of um, inspirations and has always been a, a big inspiration for me. Um, Rufus, you've been doing a whole lot of during, a whole lot of music during the quarantine. And I love, I wish I could say I, I made this up, but I didn't, I hate you for it is, uh, your quarantunes at your piano at home. I've loved that. So I encourage people to check that out. But you also have an album coming up that, that I was lucky enough to get a sneak peek at, which I love. Thank you. Um, and uh, can you tell people about this little yeah, uh, yeah, no, I mean, thing I have, you have? Yeah, no, I have an album coming out on Follow the Rules on uh, July 10th. So uh, with a, a week or two from now. And um, and I, uh, yeah, I did these quarantunes. I sang a lot from home. Um, and I was, it was funny because I was thinking, I was thinking about the show uh, that, 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 that we did, you know, um, your show and, and, I was, and, and uh, some of your other guests you were, you were talking about like what they looked like or who they were. And I was, of course, I'm, I'm Jacob Jewell, right? Because that's his name. Yes, that's his Yeah, yeah. but I was thinking like, who, who was he or what, what, how would one describe him? And I was thinking like, he's kind of like a cross between um howard stern and joan crawford so <laughs> so yeah so it was, put, so put, thank put you that for allowing like a, me to put those two together yeah. yeah i don't think i ever really would have i mean that was the whole point yeah. of the show and i mentioned wayne coin earlier from the flaming lips so the, the three of them together yeah. I and mean, that's a that's a cocktail party i would love to uh yeah, yeah. to so, see unfold you yeah. also have something that i got to take a look at which i love because uh I've, i went to a couple of uh your concerts before the quarantine where yeah. you did a couple great um uh, you were doing covers of, of great songwriters and yes. you there's a wonderful rendition you did that i was so glad to see on this as a, i'm sorry if this is a spoiler the um you did a, a pair uh, at the paramore yes. uh, manor uh, yeah, Matt, house man, yeah, Matt, ma mansion in yeah. la and this is a concert that you did during quarantine where everyone's social yeah. distant and everything with masks and you open by singing a wonderful Jerry Herman song yes. called Dear World. If it's a yeah. song, uh, because the show is about songwriters, Jerry Herman being one of the greats, obviously, I encourage all of you to check the, the, out that song. Recently passed, Jerry. Herman. Recently passed away. Yeah, amazing legacy. Um, do you want to talk, when does that come out? When is that? Yeah, uh, well, that, well, I mean, we did, we did the, uh, the live stream from the Paramore and, and the, the response was so uh, fantastic that it, that uh, I think you know we're going to do more with those recordings, but it will be aired again on uh, RTA, which is a European uh, channel, and also on All Arts uh, on PBS. So it's going to be around. And I will say with that song. you know yeah. uh, for their work and and i get that it's 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 important um but i opened the show uh, the 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 paramore show with that song and my dad wrote me back and said that's an amazing song you wrote 
<laughs> just say thanks, like, Dad. No, yeah, I wish. It's, I fucking wish uh, I wrote that song. Uh, yeah, Jesus. I wish I wrote that song. He was like, that's a keeper, Rufus. I'm like, I know. I, I, I had guilt <laughs> about you not writing any songs for this show. Maybe second season if that happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we got to move on, man. But yes. lots of love. Thank, Thank you for, you. for being Congratulations. here. Congratulations. Thanks so much, man. We'll talk okay, soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. All right. Um, I know uh, my friend Bonnie, who I have lots to say about Bonnie. There's like not enough time to talk to all these people. We might go a little over. Bonnie, if you're with us, um, I have to try one more time, one more time to get my buddy Kevin McHale. And if third's not the charm, then... I guess uh, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed since this works because I wanted to talk to Kevin about a few things. Uh, yes! Oh, wait, it didn't work. Sorry. What? Who, hey, excuse me, sir. Have you, do you know who Kevin McHale is? I'm trying no, to sure. never met her. Cool. You look good. The hair thing. Look at this. You just look like a hip guy that I'm like, I would buy gear off you. I'd buy music gear off you. Well, I I have some. You want any? Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Hey, man, dude, I don't know if you going? Caught, it's going good. I was telling Cord the same thing. Uh, you guys really helped me out in such a pinch and you were so fucking funny. Uh, I hope you're as happy with it as I am. Did you get a chance you to check me? it out? I mean, like, I don't know necessarily what your intentions were with setting out to do this show, but getting to do, I mean, we got to do it on Glee for 8 billion years, but like getting to do crazy shit like that with your friends, yeah. especially in your position where you get fucking like Rufus Wainwright, like what? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like to do, to like to sing these songs and to like play these parts, especially like growing up around music, the music business where you sort yeah. of just get to like fulfill. and sing this crazy song and pretend to be rock stars like it's great yeah man oh jenna's here hey jenna there she is um you um you are also a great songwriter and you and i are both uh, audio files music files um and i really wanted to have you in court specifically for this because and a lot of people on on uh, from the glee class are, are write music and are and are very adept in the songwriting world but you have always been somebody that i always love to compare notes with on songs we like and, and vocal performances and stuff. And uh, I just have to shout out, because I know you, you've released music in the past year or two. James Dean <laughs> is a really fucking good song. Hey. Uh, it has hey. an, it is, does not have the amount of streams as it should. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to... Cord was sending me music last night. Oh yeah, his, his music last too. Night. So it's, it's nice that we can like do that with one another. I appreciate the honest feedback with the music. Are you are you doing uh, other like sessions? I mean, not even just during the quarantine, but have you been writing whether for yourself or for other people? Is that something I I don't know. Mostly try mostly for like. Helping like more of my friends do the things. Yeah, which you have always done. You helped me. And you also, like I was telling a story about how your vocals on it were so good. You were like almost too good with those like, <laughs> and they're perfectly tailored. Like you, you had the whole mid 2000s like snarl. Uh, I mean, that's what we grew good. up with, you know? I know, anything that went like this. Yeah. Yeah, anything with that is uh, is kind of in our blood at this yeah. point. Yeah, I didn't know I could do it until I got in the booth. I was like, oh, all right. Oh, this, I, I think it's I there. got this. Yeah, man. Um, I'm sorry that I have to I have to yield your time for the one and only Bonnie McFucking Key. Oh, no, it's fine. Bonnie McKee is the fucking best. Bonnie, yeah. I love you. She's a yeah. goddamn legend. You she's go she's an angel. Um, so I'm going to talk to her, but I love you, man. Thanks for, for helping me with the show. Well, of I'll course. See you I see you guys. watch it. It's fucking hilarious. Yes, watch Rosie. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 
Uh, just in case you're joining us, we are talking about the album drop of Royalties because it is a musical show on Quibi and there's a song of, of, of varying genres, but it's about songwriters. And before we made this thing a, a real show with Quibi, um, I consulted somebody who I've been a very, very long as a songwriter forever. Bonnie McKee, if, if you're not familiar with her work, has written all kinds of hits. Um, namely, and more connected to my career, was uh, one of the writers of Teenage Dream, a song that would be a big part of, of my career on Glee and a song that I've always loved. And I've always loved her, her style, not only as a writer, but as a human being. And she's, she just oozes sex, sophistication, and talent. She is just all the things that I think is worthwhile about our music industry. And I was so glad to get her on the show. She helped us um, get it sold in the first place. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in a second. So please, I know we're running a little behind. Without further ado, the incredibly amazing Miss Bonnie McKee. Join us, Bonnie. You are so rad. There, look at you. Hi. Hashtag no filter. That's just what you look like. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, I want like this too. So. Um, there is so much to talk about with you that I'm going to just motor mouth because I want you to talk. Um, but I want people to know that when we started this thing out, because, you know, you have such Uh, mm -hmm. for the pilot presentation, which I guess you can explain to people as like a, a sizzle reel. And we wrote this song for Chrissy Teigen. And yes. it was called, do you remember what the song was called? Uh, I remember okay that if you it know. was, huh? There were cowboys involved. I remember, oh yeah, Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. And, and it I remember was... there was a Stone Cold Steve Austin reference in that yep. song that I was yep. really proud of. And I yes, me really too. Bummed. I was really bummed that they didn't, Get to use it in the end. Um, it was uh, cause I'm a low, 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 low ranger, but I'm not a low, no, 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 no baby. baby. Um, yeah, it was a, the whole idea was to make it like this dumb pop song, and we had the song, and it is recorded. There's a there's a version of this that hopefully maybe we'll put it in season two, something yeah. through through a variety of strange red tape that the music industry sometimes has lying around. We couldn't end up using that song in the show, so I said, "Fuck it, I can't have the song. I want the song writer. Give me Bonnie McKee. That's better <laughs> anyway." Sorry, Chris Egan. I love you. You know I love you, and hopefully we get to use that that song at some point, but. We got Bonnie McKee, and uh, we really wanted you to play like uh, a version of uh, you know some of the pop stars that you've helped really kind of build with your with your songwriting. So yeah, it, thank it was you. Really, yeah, it was really really fun. It was such an honor. Um, you know, I've done a little bit of acting over the years, but my songwriting career took off, and that is kind of a full time job, as you understand yeah, these course. things. Um, and so I was really excited to to do a little acting, and also um, you know to be on the other side where it's like you're singing somebody else's song because I didn't write the song that I'm actually singing in the episode. I know. There's two songs, actually. There's two songs on the episode. and There's two songs, yes, that we tried to... And yes, that, that playlisted today. On I know, on, <laughs> on Music Friday. Let Your Hair Down. For those of you who haven't seen this episode, uh, it's sort of a classic uh, creation by committee meeting where the creatives have to talk to this whole corporate uh, mess of people putting in all their contributions to how to write a song and people kind of get their eyes crossed and how they're going to accomplish this. This is a meeting that many songwriters have had from the suits that don't know anything about songwriting. Uh, it's a classic uh, tale. And so we wrote two songs basically of the same structure, let your hair down and kick your shoes off that if you played at the exact same time, will line up perfectly. But that was a song that is in the episode that is also included on the album drop of today. And uh, you can hear that. And Bonnie didn't actually write on it, which is so crazy. I had you do two things that like, you didn't write it and you're, at, you're acting in it. We did a completely different 180 from your day to day life, man. Really fun. I really enjoyed it. And you know, getting to well, first of all, I had to learn the choreography for two full songs for two full music videos. No. And I was working with uh, Boom Cat, who is like the most incredible choreographer and like, yes, not easy. Okay, like I, I, I dance, but this was some next level shit. And then when I got on set, it was also like 200 degrees that day. And it was of course it was. It was but luckily, you know, what was so fun about it, I know you're really worried, you know, the show is such a situation. They are, you know, you leave it to the dancers and as long as you kind of 
play the fun of all of it, which you did. And uh, I, I have zero complaints. Then it works. So I hope you're happy with it. I was so happy to have you there. Um, just to give a shout out to some things you're working on, you have a song that came out with Fangs and Cobra Kid, right? Fangs and PH. Yeah, I've been doing, I've been working with a lot of indie artists. Um, I myself am an indie artist. And so label or whatever, because I've done all these worldwide hits or whatever, but I just, I write, I like, whatever. To, yeah, I, love that. I like projects that I'm passionate about. And so I've been working with Cobra Man, who are a local duo. It's like disco rock shit, which is my favorite. And then Fangs, who is also an incredible artist. So um, yeah, I had two songs come out. Uh, nice. And yeah, I've been working on my own album as well in quarantine. Uh, nice. All having a lot of feelings right now. And so I'm trying to channel that. Yeah. Well, you're lucky that you, ha we're all lucky that you have the ability to write songs because now we all get to benefit from your, your feels. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, check out Bonnie McKee. If you know anything about her, Wikipedia, look, at, look up her story. It's an incredible one. Check out all her hits. You know way more songs than, of hers than you, I think you realize. Check out her own music uh, along with the songs she's written for other artists. She is a queen incarnate. And uh, we're so lucky to have her on this show. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, onwards and upwards. We got to move because we have some other people that are waiting. So if you're, if you're watching this and you're waiting to be called on, just hang tight. This next person is someone who I've also been a fan of for a long time. Um, like many of the people that we had in the show, I wanted to feature things about them that maybe a wider audience might not be as familiar with. Uh, she's been uh, a big star on the wonderful Netflix series Glow for a long time, but she's also a comedian and a musical comedian and writes a lot of original comedic songs, which I encourage you to check out. But she plays Mackenzie, who is the lead uh, singer and front woman of the uh, crazy indie band uh, uh, Polyamorous and the Unicorn Guild, AKA the character I play Pierce's ex-girlfriend, the freewheeling, fun-loving, Jackie Tone, everybody. Give it up for Jackie. Jackie, where are you at? Jackie Tone declined. Jackie, don't decline me. What you doing? I'm inviting you to the party. How dare you? I'm going to try it one more time, and hopefully she doesn't let me down. She was in character. She was letting me down. There she is. Hi, Jackie. I, it worked. It worked. You are so good at this. I, I'm just talking to my friends, you know, but man. Like, the like, it's not easy to, like, Rush someone don't, on and rush someone off, and you don't the jinx it. Wait, right? And then okay, like, that's all the time we have for. Have Thanks everybody. Say bye to Jackie Tone. Have a great day. Thank you guys. Just um, Bette Midler on my wall. Oh, oh yeah, of course. God, you're such a you're you're such a you. I mean, um, switch. Yeah, I said you, but you. Said Uh, songwriter and so when we were writing this character I immediately was like we have to have Jackie Tone on this and I have to give you full credit I haven't mentioned all the other songwriters that we've worked on these songs with because I've been moving super fast and I encourage you to check out who those people are but you came in on this session for the song and most of the time I And you sat on with your guitar and you played me a chorus. Do you have your guitar? Of course you do. And you played this. You're like, I don't know, I've been thinking a lot about polyamory and, that, and you just played this like, chorus. I'm so low in this frame. I was like, It's okay. I, we can use our imagination. What did you sing? I was like, Is it like, it's you I love, but also you. And right. also, and also you. Is it? It's you. You sound I so love, good. But also you. And also you. And also you. you. And then so, just that alone, it was one of those magic songwriting moments. And I talked. Because the song was called One True Loves. With it, with a plural ass, which is like kind of funny, but it just was not as well, good as the title. Funny, also, you and I googled it because as like um as a joke writer, but as a joke writer, I googled it and there was like a web series called One True Loves, and I oh. was like, we can't call our song, so I was like, 
it's polyamory. It's, it's Because normally you come to a session with like a lyric idea or a line of a chorus. You know, you think of like that Casey Musgraves genius, like Space Cowboy. Like, yeah, it's a great oh, song. Oh, it's just you want to bite it. It's such a good idea. Yeah, it's a good but one. this session, I just came to with jokes. Like, remember how fun college was? Polyamory is like that, but forever. You know? Yep, but forever. Yeah, so forever. I should just, so I just want to give you full credit for coming in with such a great idea. And then from there, we added all the other fun stuff. And yes, I love the AEIOU. And then we ended up putting One True Loves in, on, on the bridge. But um, you also are like a, a great songwriter. You have a series on Amazon, right? Yes. With your longtime buddy, Kristen Bell. You wrote like over 50 fucking songs. Yes! Right? So that show is called Do Ray and Me. It's preschool. And it's, we got pushed back. So we were supposed to come out this fall. But because of the plague, it's now coming out spring 2021. Great. I mean, animation takes a long time, so it's oh, like. Oh yeah, but like, and it was already taking a long time to then be released this fall. And now it's, we got pushed. Cause obviously we can't even go to the studio. Do we can't do. Really killed it. I hope you like it as much as I do. The song's great. You're great. I, I just, I, I fucking adore I you. you. I love working with you. And this has been such a, I, this was my first time ever writing something I performed. Like on the cartoon, I'm writing, you know what I mean? So this was, yeah. I've written before and I've sung on TV before, but I've never written, sung something I've written on TV before. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Mwah. Bye, we gotta move on. I too. will see you next time. Bye, babe. Okay. All right. Moving right along, um, I got a kind of slim pickings here. Not a lot of people left. Um, so much to say about this next gal. Um, I was uh, I was familiar with with a few of her things, um, but when she came up, I, I checked out her music and got really like became an instant fan. And it only got worse when I met her and we got to work together. And now I'm like like really all all about the amazing uh, Sabrina Carpenter. I'm one of our pop stars on the show um, and our burgeoning young star that we end the show with. Um, so please welcome Sabrina fucking Carpenter. Hi! Yo, what up girl? Hello, How's hello, it going? hello. It's going How good, thanks you? for joining us. I'm so good. Um, thanks for waiting. I know these things always go a little later than it's been nature. amazing. I just get to watch this. Sh sh you kill this show. It's been lovely. I'm wondering I'm what the best. diplomas are behind you. I've been trying. They're to fake. They're, they're fake. fake. No, they're all my wife's. Are you kidding me? It's my. She's she's the accomplished one. It's like and my you this and my you that. Mine's like no. the tiny ones. That's in Michigan, really funny. Yeah. I've no, been trying to figure it out. I'm also paying attention to everything everyone's saying because I'm learning a lot, but it's it's been good. How are you? I'm sure that's not true. You know quite a lot, and I I always feel bad when I when I blow your shit up because I don't want to embarrass you, but um. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, you annoy you annoy the shit out of oh you. Gosh, I'm curious. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I hate it when when I when people say like, "Oh my god, I was so impressed by something you did." I always go, "What? So what did you, what do you think I was gonna fucking blow it? Like, what, what, what do you mean by that?" I so know. I'm careful to say that to you because I was impressed. I was not surprised. I was I so know. in love with your uh, your talent. And so, so let's talk about something really quick that isn't actually royalties. You and I were on Broadway at the same time, man. I mean, barely, but yeah, barely. so close. So close. I had tickets to see you uh, three days after Broadway got shut down. For those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Sabrina Carpenter was making her Broadway debut in Mean Girls. And I was so excited because you and Jordan Fisher, yeah. who's another Broadway boy, another cast member and, of and Royalties. I, and I saw him and Evan Hansen uh, just a few nights before the shutdown. But like, yeah, it would have been a really, really beautiful. It would have been. It we all could have gotten our drinks after our show, talking I war mean, stories. But you did get to open it. That's the thing. A lot of people didn't get to do. So tell me about that. Was it everything you dreamed of? Was it amazing? Was it scary? It actually was.
expect to do it um, at this point in my life. So it was something that kind of came out of nowhere. The opportunity uh, came at a time where I really, really needed to uh, step outside of my comfort zone in a lot of ways. Um, and and that's exactly what I got to do. And we, we rehearsed for two months and um, hopefully hopefully we'll get to go back at some point. But I mean, yeah, I, I, so I, I, wanna, I wanna see you too. I feel like- I, I mean, it's all about that other. hang, man. The New, York, the New York hang after a show. And you're yeah. 21 now. We can go get a I'm drink and talk stu stuff. It's actually so, like yeah. the universe did that on purpose because it knew that I wasn't going to be 21 yet and that we, it would have been the best <laughs> one. So, oh, man. We'll, well, well I will say, you know, it's not even about the drinks at that point. It's, it's just about the hang, you know, because yeah. when you it's have friends that can't go into it. Yeah, it just, it just. About is like the scheduling because like, Mondays are only days off and then we all only have like the same day off or, or was that this is that the same all around I'm still uh, for the for the most part some shows are different but for the okay. most part except on Wednesdays and Saturdays you sleep in all goddamn day right. and Sunday right. um which is super nice so I'm so glad you got to do it I have I'm glad you had fun um thank you for bringing a Bailey to life uh you know I, what's funny is you know we kind of make fun of you know, just so there's no mistaking out there for any fans out there, you know, the, Bailey is nothing like Sabrina. Uh, nothing. Well, I mean, like she, she's kind of like this plasticine kind of like all yeah, into her like, phone. That is not you all at all. The parts of me that my mom like kind of calls out when I'm being bratty, and and that was Bailey. Like she was just yeah. like, like all those moments when I'm uh, when I'm feeling a little fresher than usual. It, it's so. I mean, obviously, I give you credit for like a thousand things, but especially just even getting the privilege to work with you on set and you being there from like everything from my fitting to behind the camera for every single take. And then in the studio when we recorded the song, like everything was just so wonderful. And to get to experience it with you was, was such a joy. So I'm glad you say that because I feel like a micromanaging stage mom. Where I'm like, God, I hope I'm not just like freaking these people out. So no, it's kind care. of you to say. You care. It's the best thing in the world. I do it was my baby. And you brought her to life. And it's so beautiful. I love how per perfect song is one of my favorites. I kind of um, it, there's just it's enough perfect. elegance to it that uh, you really just knocked out of the park and getting to work on your vocal was so much fun because you can fucking sing, girl. You can sing your ass off. Thank you. And it's, uh, it was such a pleasure. I'm so glad that we get to know each other and I hope, hope that we get to see each other in person very soon. I thank we're, you so much for being part of our show. We're gonna have a great hang soon. Thank you so much. Everybody watch Royalties. Check out Royalties, the song and Sabrina's song, Perfect Song is part of the album that comes out today, season one, the official soundtrack. Check it out because she's amazing on it. We'll see you very soon. Mwah. Thank you for joining Thanks, us. Mom. Bye, Darren. See ya. Um, I also failed to mention because I'm just so excited talking talking with her. And she, incidentally, she's uh, in a Netflix project with Jordan, and it's it's all like a, a big soup together. Um, there's also a trailer out for a movie that's coming out. Or about it this last but certainly not least uh the gentleman who i think people always say bears no introduction i think absolutely does bear introduction um obviously i've been a fan of him for a long time beyond some of the things that people would first think of um he's a tremendous character actor uh a great vocalist and um and just a great guy and a fellow fanboy and we're going to talk about being a fanboy and what that does to one's career he plays none other than the country rock legend himself on our show royalties, Philip Combs, uh, who is a, of course, a fictional person, but the person who plays him is very real, very talented and very fucking funny. Please welcome the wonderful Mark Hamill, AKA Hamill himself as his, uh, his Instagram handle would, would, uh, would introduce him as. It's waiting, I'm not sure it's going in quite yet. Hopefully it's connecting. There he is. Hey. Hey man, how I'm you doing? Good. You want to point right. that light more at me there? Okay. We got it. We're all lit. We're good. It looks um, like I'm over lit. I look like Casper, the friendly ghost here. The friendliest ghost you know. <laughs> more than um, I don't want to admit. So um, I wanted to talk about being, being fanboys because, you know, this song, uh, I, I wish I could say it was smart enough. I've been joking about this in some of the interviews that we've been doing about how you said yes to this because of your personal love for King Kong. And uh, this is something that I had no idea about. And if I was an evil genius, maybe I would have plotted this out in an effort <laughs> to have, yeah, you, have yeah. you say yes. 
And um, the way that you talk about that film and how it got you into films really reminded me that, man, I too have been a fanboy of things, whether it's Star Wars or Batman or other things my whole life that I guess I wanted to say, if there's any fanboys watching out there, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Mark, you got to be careful because if, if you're a big enough fanboy and you get involved in the industry, you're going to end up making shit for other fanboys because right, I had right. no idea I would end up in this position. Yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about, you know, you as a kid, you loved King Kong and you loved all these, right. these franchises. Were there any, any other things that just, the way that people just glob onto Star Wars, were there other things that you loved, uh, television, film, music? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the earliest memories I have of waiting for the newspaper to arrive on the doorstep because there were comic strips. I think comic mm -hmm. strips taught me to read Peanuts and, and, and some, you know, Charlie Brown and all of those. Um, so I loved animation. I loved television, obviously. My parents were really worried because I watched so much television. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, uh, the movies that were on TV, I discovered all the universal horror films, Frankenstein, Dracula, you know, uh, The Wolfman and so forth. And I was obsessed with those. I mean, I was always all in. I didn't just sort of like things. I had a mad passion for them so that when uh, I discovered the universal horror films, you know, I had to read all about them in Famous Monsters. Who were the directors? Who were the actors? Uh, right. How did they come to be? Uh, you know, that was sort of all eclipsed when I, I was 11 and the Beatles hit. I mean, yeah. that was like a, a entertainment phenomenon like we'd never seen. The music was great. The way they talked was we'd never heard anybody talk like that. I mean, when A Hard Day's Night came out, they were so self-effacing and natural and funny and they just rocked my world. And, and it was one of those things. I mean, now there's the entertainment is so segmented. There's so many avenues to get your entertainment. Uh, in those days, I mean, the, the they were on the, uh, they were February 12, 1964. They were on the Ed Sullivan show. And the next day at school, there was nobody that had not seen the Beatles on right. Ed Sullivan. So uh, I kept thinking, well, there'll be another Beatles someday that'll come along and, as, as far as I can see, there never has been. I mean, there's been great artists, no question about it. But in terms of all-encompassing uh, yeah. uh, uh, entertainment that just rocks your world, there was nothing like the Beatles. But you know, by I feel the way, like it comes in different ways. Yes. Well, I was just going to say, you, you keep talking about my love for King Kong, but I have to tell you, that got my attention. But uh -huh. when th they sent me the song, and I, I hadn't heard that there was even a show attached. I, I was under the impression that they just wanted me to do this music video. And when I listen to that song, it works on its own as a, a separate entity. It's like a little mini movie. You establish a premise, you take it to its limits in terms of every single comic variation of uh, what's possible within the song. And then it ends. I mean, aside from it being a really catchy tune, the lyrics are, hilarious i mean i i have to give you credit i mean you and uh nick and i don't know how many people worked on the song but it's just uh, a, a gem and i i'm so lucky to have hooked up with you so thank you so much i Thanks, mean you're man. you're insanely talented i have to <laughs> tell you because i did you know when i met you at the tony awards it was my daughter that was really excited she goes oh you know that was darren chris from glee now see i'm slow on the upkeep i I, you know, I haven't, I hadn't seen Glee at that point. Now that I'm sort of coming up to speed on you and I saw you in Hollywood and I'm learning about all your credits, uh, uh, I, you know, so it was uh, a, a stroke of good fortune that, uh, that I hooked up with you, Darren. That's very kind of you, Mark. Uh, something that I, that I love telling people is, uh, you know, when people always associate singing as a, as a different muscle from using your voice or being able to do voices right. and, uh, I know you were hesitant about doing the singing in the booth, but one of my sort of greatest recent privileges in my career was vocal producing you and getting to, and I think at one point you didn't notice this, but you know how like fanboys always get, you know, uh, freaked out about themselves when they say stuff. I think at one point I said, use your instincts or trust your instincts. And I meant that without <laughs> any shred of irony. And after it left my mouth, I went, did I just say that? Just, no, no, no. Trying, well, see, you're, to avoid it. <laughs> you're you're such a good actor. Uh, you acted completely professionally and and very cool. And I would have not uh, realized that you were signing, trying to suppress an inner fanboy. And by the wow. way, I was really impressed that uh, Tony Evolori mentioned that, that 
that that uh, Kong was one of his favorite songs, and that means a lot. Because now my goal is to binge watch the whole uh, show. Uh, and, Please do. And, yeah, I mean, because uh, I sort of was focused on my thing, but now I want to hear the whole album. There's, well, yeah, the whole album is out today. That's what we're talking about. Mark is one of the songs on it uh, as Philip Combs singing the song about King Kong's penis. If you don't know why we're singing about that, you can definitely check out the episode. The joke will explain itself. There's just one more thing I want to ask, Mark, before we sure. go, which is um, at, you know, during quarantine, one of the most overwhelming concepts is that, okay, now that you have time, we can, you can watch anything. It's overwhelming. You know, the human, we, the human race loves options, but we hate deciding. It's like that episode, uh, that Twilight Zone episode, you know, where the guy's All glasses right. breaks. Yeah. He finally gets a chance to read his book. Time, time enough at time, last. Time enough, yeah. With time, Burgess Meredith. Yeah. Yes. Hen uh, he was a small man, Henry something. Um, I yeah. forget the, what it was. But is there, you know, is there anything that you're like, oh, now I get to watch this, whether they're old, old movies you want to revisit or that show you never got around to watching. Like, where, where do you even start? There's so much shit to yeah. watch. Like, what, what's, what's something that you, that you want to get into? Well, you, you, if I had a top 10 TV series of all time, you just mentioned one of mine, The Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. And now that we've lost uh, Carl Reiner, it's a good time yeah. for people who haven't seen The Dick Van Dyke Show, one of the yes. greatest all-time sitcoms. And, and uh, again, a show about show business. I always mm -hmm. loved shows about show business. Mary Tyler Moore worked at a, at a, a news station and, mm -hmm. and uh, WKRP in Cincinnati was a, set in a radio station. I love shows about show business. And uh, mm -hmm. during this lockdown time, you're right. I mean, I've ordered so many books and you get them in the mail and you go, oh, good, I got it. And then you put it on your shelf and you don't read it. <laughs> that's a, yeah. So that's what I, my goal is to try and read all the books I ordered. And, uh, uh, you know, as as we say, quoting Twi uh, Twilight Zone, there's time enough time at time. last. At last. Well, I hope your glasses, mm -hmm. your proverbial glasses don't break. Thank you for joining <laughs> us on the show. It's Thanks been such for a having to me. get to know each other a little bit. Right. You knocked it out of the park. And hopefully okay. we'll see you out there. Safe and Have a great 4th of July, everyone. Thanks. See you, man. See you. All right. Well, that's the stuff dreams are made of, guys. Talk about shows, about showbiz royalties is definitely one of those in a very satirical way. That was a great suggestion from Mark Hamill, Dick Van Dyke show. Uh, um, you know, it's, it, 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 it's just, wait, Dick Van Dyke. I was, I'm, excuse me, Carl Reiner just recently passed away, an amazing uh, comedian, uh, his son, uh, Rob Reiner, who was not only an actor in Hollywood, but a great director himself. So many great things to experience, uh, to, to watch during this time. Now, also, uh, this is a very tricky time, as you guys know, um, if you follow me on social media or any of my colleagues on the show, you know, a lot's happening in the world and it's definitely not something that we ignore or don't want to talk about. I'm just going to invite my co-star and friend, Kether Donahue, to this Instagram Live. I know we're going a little over time, but we just wanted to talk about some things really quick, just while we had your attention um, to kind of leverage any attention on this to something that we, that we both believe in. Um, hi, Kether. Hi. Oh, that was so that I was love fun, seeing right? Seeing everybody. Yeah, I know. Also, it's nice I, to see I, me and uh, Tony and Georgia did a little three-way FaceTime right after. Oh yeah. And oh. Oh, Tony's texting right now. I promised I'd ask Tony for you. Um, are you wearing pants, Darren? We yes, I. But but I only put them on. We want proof. Minutes. We want proof. <laughs> Yay! Okay. But but within minutes of this starting. Of course. Um, of course. So recently, you know, you, a lot of people with, uh, with platforms in entertainment and otherwise have been um, lending their platforms to, to folks who um, we all believe should have a bit of a spotlight on them. And you recently handed over your social platform to a wonderful young woman, um, Bria. If you, would you mind just talking about her for a second? Because I want to pivot this before we sign off. Just oh uh, talk about her a little bit. Yes. So um, I don't know if you guys watch How to Get Away with Murder, but my really good buddy, Matt McGorry, who's on that show, owns an incredible company called uh, Inspired Justice. And their, their whole goal is uh, it's, it's dedicated toward uh, the liberation of black folks and people of color. And um, Bria Baker is uh, the, the director of programs there. And I was honored for her to take over my Instagram uh, recently. And, and there's just so many things we could all do right now to get on board and help the movement. Um, something you could do right now, there's a link in my bio for Initiate Justice. It's a wonderful organization um, dedicated toward ending mass incarceration in LA. 
and empowering those who are affected by mass incarceration, not just the people who have been uh, been kind of crushed under the, the criminalization systems, but their families and people in communities that have been ravaged by mass incarceration, yes. uh, particularly black communities. Yes. And, and also, I think sometimes people have this idea that activism is this like, you know, like, it, it could be fun. So for example, something Bria encouraged me to talk about is another amazing thing we could all do right now is support black owned businesses. Mm -hmm. And yep. so I have, does anyone like coffee? Do you like bottle <laughs> scrub? Because I like both of those amazing things. Amazing company called Sheer Necessity owned by my badass friend, Kimberly, Kevin Williams. Um, Sheer Necessity, I think she's on. Kimberly, put the, the link in the comments. I am going to, I purchased 10 of these. The first 10 people to go into her DMs will get a free scrub. And I am confident that when you use it, you will be a returning customer and you're gonna love it so much. You're gonna <laughs> post about it, tag, tag me, tag, tag Darren, tag Kimberly. Um, it's and, and, and just, what I'll just say about it is because I love Shark Tank, it's my favorite show. One of my favorite things is when there's a company where someone's not trying to, to make a business, the business just organically happens. Kimberly sure. was not trying to make a business. She literally had to make it out of sheer necessity, which is the name of it. After her pregnancy, she had stretch marks. She developed eczema. She had all these skin issues. And so her grandma gave her this recipe with coffee beans and essential oils. She put it together, put it all over her body, and her, her, all of her skin issues were going away. And at the gym, in the steam room, every week, all the women in the steam room would come in and be like, oh my God, Kimberly, your skin is healed, it's glowing. Can you make me this scrub? So she just started making this scrub for people at the gym. And, and their, their skin issues were going away. And then next thing you know, she has this amazing business. And 30% right. of all of her um, profits go toward um, another charity that is also dedicated toward helping black communities. So awesome. it's, yeah, just awesome. You know, that, fun. that is fun. So that is fun and, and, and sexy. Um, so for sexy. those, you know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of places where you go, I, I want to help. I'm at home. I can't, I can't go out to protest or I'm, I'm too young or I'm, I'm immunocompromised. There's these things where you can't leave. It's a very scary thing. You know, what can I do? Whether, you know, uh, if you're a white, as a white, person or any person who, who feels like maybe helpless, um, you know, there's only so much you can do. So I'm not here to ask people to necessarily open your wallets because maybe people are unemployed right now. It's a very difficult time and there's a sense of helplessness. So I would say stay informed, stay listening to the, to the correct voices, support black owned businesses, keep an eye out for what's, what's happening in the world. And because we want to give a shout out, I think the link is in my bio. If it's not, it will be shortly. Um, I'm so bad with Instagram. Uh, the link will be in the bio for Initiate Justice, which again, per, per Bria's uh, recommendation, there's so many organizations that are doing such great work. And so just as a small uh, contribution of my own, I think for on behalf of the royalties uh, family, I will be donating $5,000 to Initiate oh, Justice yes! on oh, our behalf. Yes, so um, yes. because I know for a lot of you guys, it's kind of a tough, it's a tough time to, to you know, be just giving money away. So there are other ways to give, give your time, give your thoughts, give your energy and make sure that you can stay involved, stay back, stay active, use your voice. And, um, you know, yes, royalties, the soundtrack came out. It's Darren, on Quibi. It's amazing. very funny. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. It's the least, literally, it's like the least I can do. There's, only, there's so much that we can do at this time. So as artists, there's this weird thing of like, what do we do? Do we put out art? Do we make people laugh? Is it appropriate? You know, the way that progression works is we do have to march on. And while I'm not using it as an excuse to be like, yeah, fine, let's put out this thing that might be tone deaf. You know, we're a small part of keeping our fists up and keeping people engaged in positivity. Um, it by no means is an excuse to just check out from the movement. I think you should definitely educate yourself on what's going on. But uh, yes, we are here to promote our salacial royalties and the music and it is out. But if you have a chance, please go educate yourself and uh, look at what's going on with Initiate Justice and Inspire Justice as well. And, uh, you know, stay part of the world. You know, it's all it's all part of it. They're sure not separate. Necessity. It's all connected. Woo! And some sheer necessity. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us, Kether. Thank you for joining us. Do check out the show if you haven't already on Quibi. Royalties, all 10 episodes are available if you do a 14-day free trial. The album is out. We're really proud of it. It's really fun. Kether sings on it. I sing on it. There's a lot of fun things to celebrate and go 
Look out for your brothers and sisters out there. We love you. Take care of each other. We and uh, stay you. safe, everybody. Bye, Mwah. Thanks guys. for the support, everybody. Take Bye. Care. Stay safe. Bye. Thanks again, everybody. So that was the Insta. Yeah. I didn't even do that right. So that was the Insta. That was the Insta. Yeah. That's all I got, guys. Thanks for joining me. If you've been here this whole time, I know there's a lot of you and a lot of people talking that you might not be familiar with. I tend to ramble on because I get excited about all these people and about these things happening in the world. I hope you enjoy what we've put out. And uh, like I said, be good to each other. Look out for each other. And uh, I'm sending you all the love and warmth from my home to yours. Stay safe, stay aware, and stay positive, guys. We'll see you next time. All right.